I mean, I'd love to see Fury and Josh, Fury and Joshua on Saturday yeah, night. You know, it would have been funny if Fury had turned up and said, no, no, let's do it Saturday night. I'll do it on five days' notice. Um, I'm surprised we didn't get a little video of that. I know, this I was as well, actually. I was <laughs> thinking, well, was at what it. moment are we going to see I, I, a I Saturday gonna, night call-out? Yeah, I was going to ring Fury and say, you know, where's the call-out for Joshua on Saturday night? Because uh, it would be a great thing to see. Um, but... And those are the words of Gareth A. Uh, Davis. Okay. And Gareth asked a humorous question. Tyson Fury, where's the call out? <laughs> Since Anthony Joshua needed an opponent, why didn't Tyson Fury call him out? Well, that's simple. Okay. For one, why would Tyson Fury call out Anthony Joshua after he feels quote unquote rejected after offering Anthony Joshua to fight in October? Hmm. Two, Tyson Fury, and this is more important, Tyson Fury got his pot of gold at the end of the rain rainbow <laughs> fighting Francis Ngano. Okay. So nothing's going to mess that up, not a replacement fight not a fly-by-night fight that falls in your lap. Now, you would think, based on the way Tyson Fury calls out opponents left and right, and so sporadically, this would be right up his alley. I'll fight you, you big dulcer, you bodybuilder. <laughs> right? But it has to be on pay-per-view. And, you know, I know this is all joking and, you know, and all that, because there's no way Tyson Fury would fight Anthony Joshua under these circumstances. Or if at all. You know, I know he talks about Joshua at times and then he hates him, then he loves him, then he obsesses over him, then he hates him again, then he's forgot about him, then he's obsessing over him again. You know, so it's a lot to deal with with Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. It's definitely what you call a love-hate relationship. Now, uh, Tyson Fury, as far as calling out boxers, we're not sure what he's going to do. You know, if that... UFC crossover fight he does makes big numbers. I want people to pay attention. We will never see Tyson Fury in the ring with a legitimate boxer again. I could be wrong, but more than likely, this is right up the money. See, that's what happened to Floyd Mayweather. If Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor, if they did shitty, shitty numbers, he probably would have been pushed or forced or persuaded, rather, knowing Floyd, to get back into the ring and fight someone like Errol Spence or Keith Thurman or anybody over there on the Al Heyman universe. But if this does good for Tyson Fury, this could be the good thing or the best thing or the worst thing. It depends. If you're a boxing fan, it's probably the best thing. Why? Because Tyson Fury won't be in a situation where he could call shots. If it does bad, that means he's pushed or forced to fight legitimate fighters because he knows people are not buying that shit. People are not supporting the idea of Francis Ngono versus Tyson Fury. Okay, so, you know, but if it does well, he may all he may look at this as the option, okay? As a solution. Like, well, hey, let me Pick this bullshit fight as a solution. Let me do a Jake Paul, why don't you? He's making all these millions. And I'm Tyson the Fury, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. So I don't have to fight any more fighters. And as long as Mauricio Suleiman lets him do whatever he wants to do, he won't need to anyway. Because he can still hold that title as a WBC champion without fighting anybody challenging for his championship. You know, so basically what they should do for him is just Make him a franchise champion. And then make someone else the WBC champion by default. Like they did Devin Haney and Lomachenko, right? But anyway, you guys tell me what you think of Gareth Adavis asking why Tyson Fury didn't call out Anthony Joshua. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been Counterpunch. Peace!